NX 15.8 is out. Let's talk. NX 15.7 literally just got released three weeks ago. If you go to our blog post and go to change log, you will see all our release blog posts listed there. And NX 15.7 is worth checking out as it came with tons of new features. But even in NX 15.8, we have some cool, exciting stuff. First off, NX now also has Rust in its code base. Now, this is not to be confused of using NX for developing Rust-based applications, which, by the way, is totally possible, and we already have some demo applications for that. But that's for another video. What we did is improve our speed. And NX is known for looking into performance and treating performance very seriously. We've shown in the past that we are one of the fastest JavaScript monorepo tools out there. But there's always something more to optimize. And so we have been looking into, first of all, the project graph parsing and traversal, as well as the hashing function. Those have been the main points where we wanted to optimize further. Talking about the hashing function, for instance, previously we used Git as our hasher, which is actually pretty performant, but it has the drawback that once you have more working files in your staging area of Git, it becomes slower. And especially on Windows, you have seen some downsides of using Git as the main hashing mechanism, especially if you're not using WSL. Furthermore, obviously, if you don't have Git installed, it wouldn't have worked. And we had a node implementation fallback, but that's not really performant. And obviously, if you use something like Git submodules, it would also not work. So that's why we started looking into a Rust-based alternative, and it already shows some numbers. We ran it on the NX repo itself, and there the Rust-based hasher took about 50 milliseconds, while the Git-based hashing function took 69 milliseconds. And so there's a small difference, but still worth optimizing for. It's even bigger on Windows, as mentioned before, where the Rust-based hashing now took around 72 milliseconds versus over 300 milliseconds for Git-based implementations. We already ship pre-built binaries for a large set of architectures. And if there's still some issue, there's environment variables that allow you to disable that. In that case, definitely reach out to us on GitHub by opening an issue there. Next up, Dino support. So we had a nice live stream a couple of weeks ago together with Caleb and Chao from our team that work on the Dino plugin. This is right now just a labs plugin, but we keep improving it until it will be eventually merged into the main code base and become a native NX plugin. So what you can do already right now is install the Dino plugin. And once you have that installed, you will be able to generate new Dino-based applications as well as libraries. And the cool part here is it will also allow you to share TypeScript code from non-Dino projects and Dino projects. So in a monorepo situation, you could even start experimenting with Dino-based backend systems or APIs that leverage some of the functionality that I've been using in other types of TypeScript projects in that NX workspace. So definitely check it out and reach out for feedback and let us know how you use Dino and what we should improve there. So how do you interact with a command line interface tool, such as an X? Well, over the command line, right? So you write commands, you pass flags, and that's how you use it on a daily basis. But how do you know all the commands you can run, all the parameters that you can pass? Well, usually there is a dash dash help flag that you can pass, and it will give you a command line interface view of what the options are, which can be sometimes tedious to browse, now on NX, we also have directly the docs being generated on the nx.dev documentation website. So that's another way of how you could explore it. But in my opinion, the most innovative way that we did is create a dedicated IDE extension. NX console has been a huge success. So we first launched it on Visual Studio Code and it got already over 1.2 million installs and we keep improving it. So one thing that we did is integrate a way to prioritize parameters. If for instance, you generate a new React library, you will now see there's a button at the bottom here that allows you to show more options. And this helps declutter the UI with a growing number of parameters that you can now have on those generators. And so right now you only see the parameters that are either required or have some major importance related to the generator that you're using. Other parameters are hidden behind that show more button. And once you click that, you again see the whole list. If you're a plugin author yourself, you can control this via a dedicated X priority flag that allows you to either specify important, which means that would show up above the show more button, or it can also be internal, which is mostly for being invoked by other generators that you might create in your plugin. 
Given the huge popularity of NX console in the Visual Studio Marketplace, one of the main requests that we also heard from our community was to provide a similar extension for IntelliJ. And so we just announced this last week. In WebStorm, for instance, you can now go to your settings, go to plugins and search for NX console. There's already two community plugin authors that have published in NX console equivalent implementations for WebStorm in the past. And we started collaborating with them to actually develop our native NX console extension. Once you have installed that, you can now just go and leverage it. So you can right click, click NX generate, search for the generator you wanna create. For instance, here we wanna create a component and have it generate into your project. Being able to develop node-based backends in NX has always been possible. So you could basically co-locate your Express.js or Nest.js backend into your monorepo alongside your front-end applications. And this allows for some very nice possibilities where you can actually share code between those two systems. In NX 15.7, we also introduced the NX standalone project for node backends. And so now you can use an Express.js Fastify co-application just to develop your backend API. In 15.8, we improved that even further. And so now you can create a modular setup where you have your Fastify application here and you spread up some of its plugins into dedicated local libraries, or here I just call them modules in a modules folder. And all of these are Fastify plugins in this case, because Fastify was the framework of choice that I used for setting up this project. And you can then nicely leverage the NX library encapsulation for building those features in your Fastify app, for then finally bonding them back into your whole application. In addition, all the features that NX is known for, like all the generators, the speed features such as a factor project caching apply. You can also show the full graph in NX. And so you can basically visualize your Fastify application in this case. Now here it's obviously a super simple application, but you can imagine how this could be useful in a larger context. Finally, those projects are already set up such that you can just run and build them and the whole build output would be placed in a disk folder, which includes not just the actual Fastify application, but all of the modules as well. They also leverage the latest package log file pruning that we have introduced. So you get here a pruned log file that can be now nicely bundled into a Docker container. That said, Dockerization is also built in. So you can just run NX Docker build on my Fastify application, and this would then package up the application that we have just seen into a Docker container that is then ready to be used and deployed. Finally, Storybook. In NX 15.8, we introduced the component Storybook format version three. And this format as described on the Storybook blog is much more concise, reduces a lot of the boilerplate code, improves overall ergonomics and makes it simply easier to write stories. So you can check out our docs for more guidance on how to migrate, but as usual, NX tries to automate as much as possible. As such, we have an automated migration that allows you to go from Storybook 2 format to Storybook 3 format. So this was a lot. Again, as usual, hope this was helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe if you didn't already. Chime into our comments, let us know what you like most or what you would want to see next. And up until then, I'll see you in the next one.